Making your first stop motion animation. How hard is it? Actually, not that hard at all. Today, I'm going to cover what I think are the very basics you'll need to get started with a stop motion of your own. For anybody interested, stick around after the end of the tutorial for an update on part 5. So, before we begin, what is stop motion? Stop motion is a type of animation where you create the illusion of motion by playing a sequence of images rapidly one after the other. Since real videos are just a collection of still frames anyways, this just basically mimics the effect. So you want to make your own stop motion. What do you need? Basically three things. A camera, something to film, I like to use Legos so that's what I'll use in this tutorial, and some place to edit your pictures, so basically a computer, unless you're going to show your friends on a flipbook. For a camera, I would recommend a USB webcam if you've got one. The main reason being that you can use them without having to touch the camera itself. This helps keep the frame steady. Even if you're using a traditional camera on a tripod, you'll definitely still see some screen shake. Webcams can be controlled from the computer, so there's no need to interact physically with them. If you don't have a webcam and don't want to get one, you can basically use any other type of camera, even a phone camera, but you may have to get creative to keep it from moving in between shots. So, most computers will be up to the task of putting a bunch of pictures in sequence, so I'm not going to try to recommend anything as far as that goes. As far as the actual picture taking process, I can't really give a ton of specific advice. How far should you move your subject in between shots? How do you take pictures so that they'll look good when played in a sequence? Honestly. These are all things you'll figure out through trial and error. What works for me won't necessarily work for everyone, but you'll gradually develop your own style as you experiment and see what looks good to you. Finally, you'll need some software. For years, I used a program called Pinnacle Studio for basically all my editing. It struck a good balance for me because it was easy to use, but also supported decently powerful editing features. The drawbacks to this program is that it can be prone to crashing when editing long videos, and it also costs money. If you're willing and able to spend some money on an editing program, then Pinnacle should get you through a few years before you want to look for the next step. Now, of course, I'll talk about some free software as well. A quick Google search will show you quite a few options of free software. I'll post a link down in the description. The main program I've been learning lately is Blender, which is a free and open source program that's incredibly powerful. This one can definitely be daunting for a beginner, so here's my bare-bones, super-simplified Blender tutorial for an absolute stop-motion beginner. Download Blender from Blender.org. Once again, I'll put a link in the description. Once you have it installed, open it up. Here we can hit File, and then New, and select Video Editing. In the lower half of the screen, we have the sequencer. Bring the mouse down there and hit Shift-A to add in your pictures. Select Image Sequence. Then navigate to the folder with your pictures. Once you're there, tapping the A key will select everything in the folder. You can also use Shift plus click to select a certain range. Hit Add Image Strip. Now our pictures are in our sequencer, but we're not quite done. Make sure you're in the Output Properties tab. From there you can set the starting and ending frame of your animation. Move the end frame so that it matches your sequence. You'll also want to adjust your resolution to match your pictures. Not sure what resolution your pictures are? You can check it in the image properties. In the same tab, you'll also see an option to select the frame rate. The default is probably 24, but we'll want to change that. Oftentimes the stop motion animation will run at about half that rate, so we can select the drop down and then select custom. From here, we can set our frame rate to whatever we want. Somewhere between 10 and 15 is recommended, but you'll have to see what looks good to you. Below that, under the Output section, we can select the folder that we want to export our video to. Once you have that selected, look right below at File Format. It probably says PNG. Blender likes to render things as image sequences, but that defeats the purpose of what we're trying to do. So instead, let's change it from a PNG to an FFMPG video. Then select Encoding right below that to choose our Output Format. To change the container to whatever format you want, I'm going to use an MP4, and finally we can change our output quality. Here I'll use high. Finally, we can select the render button in the top left and choose render animation. And we're done. I hope you found that helpful. 
If you try this and run into any difficulties, please feel free to post any questions in the comments. And feel free to post comments about editing or stop motion topics that you'd like to see me cover next. This is the end of the tutorial, so the rest of the video is going to be a quick update on part 5. I feel the need to make some sort of comment due to how long it's taking. For anyone who's thinking that it's not happening, rest assured I've put too much work into this series to stop working on it now. This part is more ambitious than even part 4, and so it's taken me quite a bit of time to even develop the skills required to make this part. Thus far, I've decided against posting a sneak peek or anything like that, as I want it to be a surprise when it comes out, but I will say that part 5 has a pretty considerable visual upgrade from part 4. The biggest drawback of that is that it just takes an extremely long time. It's a trade-off I struggle with sometimes, but recently progress has been slow, but steady, so that's at least encouraging to me. I'd like to end this video with a thank you to all the people who've been asking about this part in the comments, and all the other people who have given their opinions and feedback, or who have said nice things about the earlier parts. Your interest in these videos motivates me more than I can possibly describe. I recently passed 1 million channel views, which is something I could have only dreamed of when I started this channel and the overwhelming majority of the feedback I've gotten on my videos has been extremely positive. This is why I feel guilty for not having more content for you all. So to all the people patiently awaiting Part 5, I can't thank you all enough, and I promise that Part 5 will be worth the wait. Until next time.